And in those days, men shall seek death, yet shall not find it, and shall desire to die, but death shall flee from them. Revelation 9 verse 6. There are things in the book of Revelation that will shock you. The Bible speaks of the true apocalypse, a mountain ablaze, cast into the sea, an unfathomable abyss being opened, unleashing the most grotesque demonic creatures imaginable, an army of locusts, resembling humans, hunting down anyone without the seal of God on their foreheads. Have you heard of the fallen angels? Indeed, there are four demonic angels set loose to wreak havoc upon the earth. After watching this video, you'll be compelled to ponder deeply about your life and your relationship with God, for what is approaching this earth is truly terrifying. If you're not in Jesus Christ, this is a biblical explanation of the seven trumpet judgments of God in the book of Revelation. The seven trumpets. Have you ever come across a passage of scripture in the Bible that made you pause and wonder, is this real? Now, of course, the Bible is real and all scripture is infallible. That being said, let's delve into the seven judgments of the trumpets of God, as described in the book of Revelation. Now, to contextualize these seven judgments of the trumpets, they will occur during the period of the tribulation after the church's rapture. Here's a brief summary of each judgment. The first trumpet, according to the Bible, involves hail and fire mixed with blood, cast upon the earth, causing destruction of vegetation and trees. A third of the world's trees are burned in this plague, and all the grass is consumed. For the second trumpet, a great mountain ablaze is cast into the sea, resulting in the death of a third of the sea creatures and the destruction of ships. The third trumpet will see a great star falling from the sky and poisoning a third of the rivers and springs, causing the death of many. This star is named Wormwood. For the fourth trumpet, the earth will witness a third of the sun, moon, and stars being struck, resulting in a third of the day and night being darkened. The fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpets are referred to as the three woes. For the fifth trumpet, something truly terrifying is unleashed. According to the Bible, a bottomless pit is opened, releasing demonic locusts that torment those who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. The sixth trumpet will introduce four diabolical horsemen. Four angels are set loose to kill a third of humanity with an army of 200,000 horsemen, resulting in great devastation and death. Now, the seventh and final trumpet heralds the coming of the kingdom of God and the judgment of the nations. The Bible, in Revelation 11 verse 19, declares, Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. Now, for a moment, let us focus on Revelation chapter 9 and the fifth trumpet. According to this passage, a star falls from the sky and opens the bottomless pit, releasing a massive cloud of smoke that obscures the sun and polluting the air. Imagine waking up one day to discover that the sunlight and air have turned dark due to smoke pouring from a bottomless pit. Just imagine the chaos, the sun barely visible, casting everything in a dim light. Panic sets in as people realize this isn't just a temporary weather phenomenon, but a catastrophic event. Now, what lies within this bottomless pit? Well, the answer is that demonic locusts will be unleashed upon the earth. The description of these locusts is almost surreal in its vividness. They have the appearance of armored horses with golden crowns and human faces, yet their hair is like that of women, and their teeth like those of lions. The sound of their wings is like the roar of an advancing army, and their tails are like scorpions with stingers that inflict unbearable pain. It's a terrifying image that would strike fear into the heart of anyone who beheld it. So why am I telling you all this? Well, I'm telling you all this because you have a choice to make. Luke 21 verse 36 says, Be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. The Bible tells us to remain vigilant at all times. When the Lord returns for His church, He will return for those who are faithfully living for Him. It will all happen in the blink of an eye. Now, tell me, are you always watchful? Are you truly following Christ? Comment below. Now, I'd like to explore the meaning of Revelation 12 verse 12, which says, Therefore rejoice, 
you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. From this verse, we can establish that. The devil is on the earth, for the Bible says, Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. From this verse, we can also establish that the devil is angry. In fact, the Bible says that Satan is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. And if his time is short, well, that means that the time is drawing nearer when it comes to the return of Jesus Christ. Indeed, if you take a step back to truly study and understand what Revelation 12 verse 12 is saying, you'll grasp the reason why sin and evil are so prevalent in our world. The book of Revelation is teeming with imagery and symbolism, and this verse is no exception. It speaks of a great war in heaven, where the dragon, also known as the devil, and his angels fought against Michael and his angels. Satan and his followers were defeated and cast down to the earth, where he is filled with fury and seeks to cause chaos and destruction. The illustration I want to use to explain this passage is that of a caged lion. Imagine a lion in a zoo, pacing back and forth in its cage. The lion is powerful and dangerous, but it's confined to a small space. The bars of the cage prevent the lion from harming those outside the cage. Now, imagine that the cage door is suddenly opened and the lion is set free. The lion is filled with fury and runs rampant, attacking everything in its path. This is similar to what is happening with Satan. He was once confined to the spiritual dimension, but has been unleashed to roam the earth. He is filled with fury and seeks to attack and destroy everything in his path. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But why is Satan so determined to cause destruction? The answer lies in his rebellion against God. Satan was an angel of God, but he rebelled and was cast out of heaven. Since then, he has waged war against God and his people, seeking to lead as many souls astray from the truth as possible. That's why sin and evil are so prevalent in this world. Satan is actively working to tempt people into sin, hoping to draw them away from God and eternal condemnation. But we should not be afraid, for Jesus has already defeated Satan on the cross. In conclusion, Revelation 12 verse 12 reminds us that sin and evil prevail in this world because of Satan's rebellion against God. As Christians, we can find comfort in the fact that Jesus has already won the battle against Satan, and through him, we have the power to resist temptation and overcome evil. Let us place our faith in Jesus and stand firm against the devil's schemes, knowing that our eternal reward is secure in Christ. We all have a choice to make every day. There is no need for us, as children of God, to live in fear of the future. The Bible tells us in Acts 2 verse 17, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The Bible tells us in Titus 2 verse 13 to await the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we have a divine hope. Jesus Christ, the return of our Lord, is the blessed hope that we have as his children. Therefore, do not be discouraged. Do not be disheartened by the events of this world, but keep your eyes on Jesus. Fix your gaze upon Jesus Christ. Concentrate on Jesus Christ. We as believers need to ensure that our focus is solely on Jesus Christ. We must focus on the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is Jesus Christ, who explicitly declared, No one comes to the Father except through me. We need to ensure that we are not like the people mentioned in Matthew 7 verse 22, where the Bible says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? The wise among us will be vigilant. They will see the signs of the times because they study the word of God. But the foolish, the foolish will slumber. They will miss the signs for lack of knowledge. Pray for wisdom, children of God. We must be wise in the times we live in. We must be filled with the Spirit and guided by the Spirit. We must prepare our lives and remain prepared, 
awaiting our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to fulfill His promise. The Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. It's good news that God will put an end to this wickedness and restore us to our heavenly dwellings. However, until that day comes, the Lord has provided us with signs to alert us that the time is near. He has given us clear signs so that we may know that the end is near. The Bible tells us that people will arise claiming to be the Christ or the Messiah, but warns us not to listen to them. Therefore, Instead of analyzing every event in the world and spending your time and energy on a checklist of all the signs of the times, I encourage you to focus your time and energy on seeking God. That should be our sole priority. To know Jesus Christ, to pray, and to know Him more. The Lord wants us to wake up to the fact that there is a heaven and a hell. There will be a day of judgment. I don't know about you, but from what I've read about heaven, it seems like a better place. No more tears, no more sadness just joy, just peace, being in the presence of the Lord for all eternity, away from the diseases and evils of this world, away from natural disasters and devastation. I encourage you to dedicate your time to cultivating a right relationship with Jesus Christ, so that when we stand before Him, we may hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Remember, amidst the darkness, the light of faith shines brightest. Keep the flame of hope burning knowing that God is in control of all things. Believe that in the end, His love and grace will triumph over any adversity. Keep walking in faith, trusting that the best is yet to come. Let your faith be an inspiration to others, a beacon of hope in a world that often seems bleak. With God by your side, there is no challenge you cannot overcome. Faith moves mountains, and with it, you can attain peace, joy, and spiritual fulfillment. May the love of God, His grace, and His infinite mercy be with you all, for you are the Israel of God today and forevermore.